Romans chapter 8. Last night we talked about your external enemy, that's Satan. This morning we talked about our, I'm sorry, that was our infernal enemy. This morning we talked about our external enemy, that's called the world. And this hour we're talking about our internal enemy, that's the flesh. Okay, I have more trouble from this guy than from Justin Trudeau. I have more trouble from this guy than I do my parents, my pastor, my neighbors, my mayor, my premier. Are you with me, church? This guy's not my friend. I looked at him this morning. He looked horrendous. When I was shaving, it didn't help. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, we can stand just one time this time, and we don't have to click our pens anymore for the rest of eternity. <laughs> in Romans chapter 8, we'll read verse number 1 to verse number 8. So I'll start the first verse, you'll read the second verse, and we'll read together verse number 8. It says, there is... Therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity, that means separation. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Everybody, verse number 8, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I want to preach on this title, the personal mafia that you have, or your flesh. Father, thank you for the Bible, that it's perfect, and uh, it can change our life. Now help our hearts to be open to the Holy Spirit as you speak to us through the Word, and might we change our life one day at a time. I pray that the choices we make would help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Your personal mafia that is always trying to control you, the flesh. I'm not talking about the fleshly body that we have, that we cut. Anybody have scars? On your body. You know, one of the worst things you can ever do is start talking about scar stories. When you start talking about, hey, let me tell you how I got this one over here. And this one over here, I fell off a cliff. And this one right here, my brother hit me with a snow shovel. And (laughs) this one over, you know, if you sit around a campfire and people start telling scar stories, you'll be up all night long. I just, as soon as someone pulls down a car story, I'm gone. I'm headed to the tent. All right. But that's not talking about. This fleshly body that we have, when the Bible says uh, in verse number five, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You watch how many people give their life to fleshly things. He used the term uh, in the book of James, it talks about being earthly, sensual, and devilish. Those are fleshly things. He says they mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. There's, there's going to be two people, two sets of people in this room. You're either going to give your life to minding spiritual things or fleshly things. When you become obsessed with fleshly things, you won't even think about anybody but what it does for you. Have you ever met someone who is obsessed with the latest clothes? Maybe obsessed with the latest cell phone? I, I know that wouldn't happen in Canada. Uh, maybe you meet someone who's obsessed with the latest hockey gear. Or obsessed with Tim Hortons. I want a double, double, triple quad. You know, they just make up numbers and they throw them at you. Obsession. But you know what this is talking about here? This is talking about an earthly following nature. The Bible also calls the old man. When you got saved, your spirit got born again, but your flesh is still lost. Your flesh is not going to heaven. Your flesh is your enemy, and you're going to have a battle with it until the day you die. How do you know when you got flesh going on? Have you ever been in a fight with your brother? Sister, neighbor, parent, 
You say, why am I fighting? Because your flesh? It's her fault, though. No, it's your flesh. The Bible says only by pride cometh contention. So when it talks about the flesh, it's our unholy nature. Our unholy flesh is proud. It's self-centered. It's kind of like me going back twice for those Rice Krispie things today that had M&Ms embedded in them, marinated in chocolate. It changed my life. You ever been there? You ever push all the small children out of the way so you can be the first one in line? That's your earthly flesh. Your earthly, fleshly body is incapable of doing righteousness in God's eyes. The spirit has got to run your life. And so many times we get that, what's the middle letter in sin? We get itis. It's a spiritual disease. It's all about I. You notice it's almost as if we live in this time where we build kings to, kingdoms to ourselves. When a, lady, a little child is born, there's 15 women that are doting on that little baby. Take it. Oh, look at it. It's so pretty. It's so nice. Let me hug. Cuddle. It's crying. Are you okay? What are they doing? They're teaching that little baby, build a kingdom to yourself. And then as it gets older, as people take care of it in mind, they think the whole world revolves around them. You ever heard of the only child syndrome? I know, I know that would never happen to only children in Canada. But, but you know what I've discovered? Some people think the whole world revolves around them because their flesh is in charge. It will ruin your life. It will destroy you. It will mash you up. There's three things you need to know. Your unholy nature is proud. It's self-centered. Number two, it's incapable of doing righteousness in God's eyes. Number three, it's a spiritual disease. That's focused on I. So what do you do? Number one, number one, don't make provision for your flesh. Don't make provision. You're in Romans. Look at chapter 13 of Romans. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 14. Here's what the Bible has to say. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Don't make provision. You know what someone makes provision is doing? They're, they're, they're saving a spot. They're providing for their flesh to make sure their flesh is taken care of. What is things that destroy you fleshly? Maybe there's a struggle you have that your flesh keeps pulling you to do wrong. As a young person in Canada during lockdown, what would be some of those examples? You caught yourself doing things you probably shouldn't do. And your flesh like a magnet would pull you to do wrong. Someone raise your hand and tell me some things. Yes. Television. Television? Okay. Yes. Stealing. Yes. Video games. Yes. Eating junk food. Yes. Instagram. Okay. These are good. Keep coming. Yes. Annoying. Let's pray for her siblings. That's a Catholic prayer. My head, my stomach, where's my cigarettes? That's how, <laughs> that's how the priests pray where I'm from. What, what's some other ways your, your flesh is manifest? Pinterest, okay, it can. Yes? What? YouTube? Have you ever watched YouTube? How many of you guys watch YouTube? Okay, you're like, but YouTube is clean until you watched it. How many of you are like, I'm just going to watch one more? Yeah. What's, what's another thing your flesh can come out? Yes, sir. Facebook? Fighting? Books? TikTok? Laziness? When I first lockdown hit, here's what I said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get in shape. I lost 25 pounds. So I was walking like eight kilometers a day. You had nothing to do. So I had to break the law everywhere we went. I mean, they shut down the beaches because, you know, COVID is at the beach. I don't know if you checked. If you study science in California, they said you could go to the beach, but you had to stand on wet sand. You couldn't stand on dry sand. I don't know what they were on, but it was messed up over there. They said you couldn't go to a pond and you couldn't go to a stream. So I walked in the park, and the police stopped me. They said, um, you know, it's against the law 
be here. I said, is there COVID here? They said, yeah. I said, like in the trees? <laughs> so it was not against the law. So I explained to him, I've talked to 15 different constitutional lawyers. I met with members of parliament, and there is no law. He goes, well, we're just supposed to tell people that. I said, okay, no problem. Thanks for doing your job. <laughs> you know what I realized? That if I follow my flesh, I can spend eight hours a day. The average teenager spends 13 hours a day in front of a screen. I know what you're thinking. I'm homeschooled. I work on a farm. Sorry. I work on a farm. <laughs> I don't do that. Okay? Okay, listen. Listen. Good. But can I tell you? Everybody has a besetting sin that affects you in your flesh. There's nobody here. And we're all going to have some struggles with our flesh. And here's the first thing God says is don't make provision for it. Are you taking notes? Let's go to number two because we're going to move fast. Galatians chapter number six. Galatians chapter number six. What God wants us to do is have zero tolerance for sin in our life. Galatians chapter six. Here's what he says in verse number seven. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. How do you not sow to the flesh? Number one, don't cut back. Cut off. Okay, some people saying, listen, I know I'm doing wrong. I'm doing fleshly things, but I'm going to do less of it. No, 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 stop it. You ever seen those, those, those Doberman pincher dogs that have no tail? How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? And they don't wag their tail. They wag the whole back of their, <laughs> their boat, you know. And uh, <laughs> this guy had one of those, and they grow with tails. And, and is, is growing up, they said, you need, to, you need to cut off his tail because this is the kind of dog he's supposed to be. He's not supposed to have a tail. He says, but I like his tail. They said, you're supposed to cut it off. So what he did was every two weeks, he'd just cut off two inches. Then the dog would bleed. He'd have to wrap it up. The next two weeks later, he cut off just two more. And then he'd bleed. Two weeks later, he cut off two inches more. You're looking at me like, that man was crazy. Well, you're crazy when you just cut back a little bit your sin. God says, stop it. God says, don't do it. Don't cut back, cut off. Number two, have a zero tolerance for sin. Statistically, 89% of Christian teenagers have viewed pornography on television. And I've talked to dozens and dozens and dozens and more females than men on their phone. And I've talked to people that said, I can't stop. You can't stop. You say, how? Zero tolerance. Is it on your phone? Throw your phone away. Is it on your iPad? Throw your iPad away. Is it on your computer? Baptize it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> well, is it on your television? Throw your television away. Do you want to stop? Zero tolerance. If there's a besetting sin in your life, you cannot tolerate it. You cannot put up with it. It will destroy you. H hold your finger there and we'll run to the book of James. I want you to notice this. I think I mentioned it before. James is right after the book of Hebrews. James chapter 1, he's talking here about the test of your faith and the test of your tribulation. And then he talks about verse number uh, 12. He said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he's tried, he receive a crown of life to whom the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, because God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Look at verse 14. Underline the first statement. But every Man is tempted. Do you realize every single one of us have lust inside of us? Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Did you hear that? You have lust inside of you. Satan, like a fisherman, puts the exact bait on the hook to catch you. 
the lust that dwells inside of you is going to, uh, Satan knows what, exactly what it takes to get you. Notice what he says, verse 14. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. You have it inside your heart. It's in your flesh. Verse 15. For when lust hath conceived. Let me ask you a question. What would you do if you were guaranteed never to get caught? What would you do if there was nobody around to see? Nobody around to catch you and you would never get caught and you say, I just want to try that. That secret place of your heart that nobody else knows about. Your parents don't know about it. Your pastor doesn't know about it. Your brother or sister don't know about it. Your spouse doesn't know about it, but God does. That place that you would entertain to do wrong if you were sure you weren't going to get caught. Why is accountability so imperative? Because we have enough flesh going on that we are scared if we get caught, we're going to be embarrassed. That's a good thing. That's a blessed thing. If you're not embarrassed of doing sin, you're going to jump off the sin cliff and you're not going to care. Look what he says. Here's a process here. Verse 15. When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth what? Sin. And sin, there it is, there's a process. When it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's not even talking about physical death, but it could. Literally, it's talking about you, you're, you get, can get so much into sin, you don't even feel like you have any spiritual life. I've watched young people get so deep into sin, they don't even know if there's a God. They don't even know if there's a Holy Spirit. They don't even know if the Bible's true. Because literally, you feel like you're dead spiritually because your sin just overwhelms you. Don't sow to the flesh. Number three, don't put confidence in the flesh. Don't put confidence. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Now I'm preaching against your three enemies because we need to stand fast. We're in a spiritual battle and we need to know what our enemy is if we're going to have victory. Proverbs chapter 28, you found it? Look at verse number 8. The Bible says, whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. But he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Verse 8. I think that's verse 8. I'm sorry. Proverbs 28, verses 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a what? Fool. If you trust yourself, you're going to fall. He that trusteth his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Don't put confidence in the fast, in your flesh. It tells us in Proverbs chapter number 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct that path. We spend our life keeping knowledge and information to our flesh. We start trusting in our planning. We trust in our future. We trust in what we think. When God says, learn how to distrust yourself and trust me. Quit leaning on yourself and lean on me. Because anything that's going to help you in the future is going to come from God, not from your flesh. I'm simply saying, don't put confidence in your flesh. Pride says, I can handle it. How many people have fallen because they said, I can handle it? Your, your cell phone. Your computer, your iPad should have, should have some kind of program that makes sure you can't handle it. That keeps wickedness off your device. I'm not going to mention the group, but there's a group that focuses on the family and on the home. And they did some research inside their group. And it's not just in America, it's in Canada. It's a well-known group. And they found out the men in that group, over 90% were viewing things online that they should not see. I can't trust the person I shave today in the mirror. I don't want to put confidence in them. Remember what he says in the book of Galatians? He says, you which are spiritual, restore them in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou also be 
Some of you think, well, I'm a good Christian. I haven't done that before. Probably because you haven't been put in that position where you could get away with it. You're not better than somebody else because you haven't done something before. You haven't been tested. That's why he said, he said the guy who's endured temptation, he's going to receive a crown of life. Praise the Lord. You, you're in a good home and a good family and a good church. But I'll tell you, the day will come when the test will come. Watch out for your flesh. Don't put confidence in it. Don't say I can handle it. Don't say the problem is not that bad. When lust hath conceived, it's just a seed. And then it begins to grow and begins to grow and begins to grow. It bringeth forth sin. And sin then has a process. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Someone said one time, sin will cost you more than you want to pay. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Sin will damage you more than you realize. And when you're done with sin, sin won't be done with you. Don't trust yourself. Don't put confidence in the flesh. Don't say, listen, I got it under control. Mom and Dad, you can leave my room. Turn the television back on. I can handle it. Why is it that the pastors and the word of God says it's not good for a man to touch a woman? You know where the flesh is? The battlefield of the flesh is right over here, there. That's where the battle is. You know, maybe you like that young lady, but your mind has already gone further than it should have gone. That's your flesh under control. Maybe you snuggle up to that girl and you say, listen, we're just holding the hands. But, you know, my heart is full of purity. No, your heart is full of lies. Uh-huh. I heard people say it's okay. It's okay. How many of you guys can just eat one bite of cheesecake and walk away? Huh? One bite of German chocolate cake and walk away. One, I could go on and on. Your flesh is not designed that way. Be honest about it. Don't trust yourself. Don't put confidence in the flesh. Can, can, can I tell you, as we're talking about our enemies, we're talking about Satan, we're talking about the world, we're talking about this fleshly nature right here that wants to destroy you. And you can destroy yourself. Satan, listen, when Satan gets you into immoral sins, he, here's what he does. He rewards you. He doesn't reward you in the way you thought you were getting rewarded. To a young man, when he gets into immoral behavior, listen closely, Satan rewards them with addiction. And you watch a young man get involved in immorality and into pornography. He'll get married and he'll cheat on his wife and then he'll cheat on his next wife. And he'll cheat on his next wife. Satan said, you, you want it? I'll give it to you. That's how he gets rewarded. Now, a woman, she doesn't get rewarded that way. She gets into sin of immorality. Listen closely. Satan rewards her with guilt. Her mind just becomes a cesspool of guilt and, and rehab centers and mental illness homes are full of ladies that could not function with the guilt because of the sin of their heart and the sin of their life and they carry that guilt in their relationship into a marriage and they damage themselves. The Bible says, listen, he that committeth adultery and fornication damages their own soul. What is that? Your mind? Your will? Your emotions? Satan doesn't care how he damages you as long as he damages you. He wants, matter of fact, he's going to let you think you're strong. He's like, he, he wants you to think you have confidence. Be strong. You're just a strong man. You can handle it. You're not going to fall. Watch out. Don't trust your flesh. Don't put confidence in the flesh. I had a boy come to me one day. Good kid. Man, good kid. Never have a problem. Not one problem from this kid. Got saved. And uh, I mean, he was faithful to church one day. He went off to university. And, and, and about a year later, he shows up in my office one day. He says, Pastor, he says, and he started crying. 
He says, do me a favor, never, 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 never stop preaching what you're preaching because it's true, it's true, it's true. He said, at university, we were just flooded with temptation. We were flooded with wickedness. We are flooded with sin. It's everywhere, every class, every break, everywhere we turned around. He said it was terrible. He said, and unfortunately, he said, you don't know it. He said, I've tried to function without anybody know. But, but this young lady I got involved with, and she's, she's pregnant. She said, he said, Pastor, she just gave birth to a child, and the baby's going to die. His heart was broken. I can't go into details, but, you know, I'll never forget him crying and hitting his chair going, Don't stop preaching the truth. So what do you do about your flesh? Number one, write fast. Crucify the flesh. Crucify the flesh. The Bible tells us in the book of Galatians. In the book of Galatians. In chapter number two. Here's what he says in verse number 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. In Galatians chapter 5. In verse number 16. You know this portion of scripture. Here's what he says. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. And he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh lusteth. There's a battle going on. In the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary the one to the other. So you cannot do the things that ye would. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. They come out in adultery and fornication, uncleanness and lasciviousness. He continues on, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering. There's a battle. You've got to put to death the flesh. You can't let it live. You've got to crucify it through Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. When you find it, say amen. I need you to stay with me. Colossians chapter 3, here's what he says in verse number 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Verse 8. Well, verse 7. In the which ye also walked sometime, and ye live in them, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, Filthy communications out of your mouth. And lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Number one, crucify yourself. Number two, deny yourself. Deny yourself. Uh, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. I know you're writing fast. Let me read it to you. Luke chapter 9, and he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Deny yourself. Refuse to be selfish. Unselfish people will always be victorious. He says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. I'll never forget a young man 17 years ago. I saw him next to the road, and I pulled over, passed him some invitations to a vacation Bible school, and he came to church. For two and a half to three years, I would pass Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, pick him up, take him to church. He, his father was a spiritual Baptist. In our country, you say Baptist. Baptist people do witchcraft. They do voodoo. See, a spiritual Baptist and Shango Baptist and Arisha Baptist it's like in Haiti they call it voodoo, in our country they call it Baptist. His father was a spiritual Baptist pastor. And it had gotten into sin and separated from his mother. And, but they believed in dreams. And here he was coming to church and he was growing and he was doing well. And he had a dream. He dreamt that he was a missionary to the Rastafarians getting expatriated back to Ethiopia. And uh, uh, to reach the Rastafarians in the dream, they had told him he had to grow his hair. So here he is. Come into church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, soul winning. And he let his hair grow. He got Rastafarian locks. It grew. Never a bad attitude. Never anger. 
He had pulled the church Sunday morning, drop off a load of visitors, go back and get another load of visitors, go get another load of visitors. Three loads of visitors he averaged per service. He had two or three dozen people who had been saved and sitting in church in his hair. Rastafarian hair. I would sit down with him and say, hey, Brother Kende, um, you can't be in leadership. You can't, you can't be this. You can't represent God. You can't rep People view you as a Rasta, a Rastafarian. Rastafarians believe in what they call jaw. One time in the book of Psalms, the word jaw is used. And they believe, well, they believe communion with God is smoking ganja, which is marijuana. Or for you scientists here, CBD oil. <laughs> and, and here he was. Never give me any trouble. He said, Pastor, I had a dream. And, and can, can I tell you what? God tested me through all of that process. He was never rebellious. But we, we started our Bible college. And for the first semester, we called, it, we called it practice semester. Everybody could come. Anybody, anywhere, anyhow could come to Bible college. We didn't have rules. People were coming, and he was coming, and, and he was growing, and he was thriving. And we came down to the next semester, and I, and, and I looked to the, the president of Bible college, and I said, we're putting all of the rules in place from this semester. We had told everybody, these are the rules. This is what you have to do. And uh, the president of the college came and says, listen, I just need to talk to you. Can, can we just remove the rules for another, another year? These people are growing. They just need some time in the word of God. And he was talking about this young man specifically. He said, look, he's doing great. I looked at him and I said this. I said, if someone's going to serve God with their life, you've got to be willing to do anything. You've got to be willing to give up anything. Can I tell you what? That was a Sunday afternoon. We walked back to my office about an hour later. He came back and he said, hey, can I just beg one more time for us to, I said, hold on. I, went, I was going to go to the washroom and I went out and I turned around and there he was standing there. He had cut all of his locks off. He was totally bald. I went back in and I said, just go look around the door. He comes out and he goes, what? <laughs> Praise Jesus. Can I tell you that man's graduated from Bible college. We ordained him three weeks ago. Because he was over to overcome, able to overcome his flesh. I sent him to Guyana and he preached at camp two years ago. And he gave his testimony in that camp. And you understand in that culture there's a lot of Rastafarians. He gave his testimony in that camp and he talked about how there was a pull and tug. And because he, he cut his hair, a lot of his black friends turned against him and said, you're following the white man's religion. He said, I'm following God. That service, 17 men surrendered to be preachers. Because one man said, I'll give everything to God. When you deny the flesh, you crucify the flesh, God's going to use you in a great way. But until you do, you're just going to fit in. I'm telling you right now, deny the flesh. Remove evil and replace it with good. Follow the Holy Spirit of God with your life if you want to have victory. Otherwise, you'll go through life. That mafia, that flesh will bully you. It'll control you. But don't give it an inch. Walk in victory. Father, we thank you for your grace, the truth from it. The battle that goes on is real every single day. Father, from Satan, from this world, from the flesh. Now, dear God, I pray that you give us victory. I pray that every young lady, every young man here would say, listen, I need help. I need accountability. I want to deny the flesh. I, I don't want to give in to the flesh. I don't want to have confidence in the flesh. I want to walk after the Spirit.